there are primarily two different types of SharePoint sites that we can create, a communication site and a team site. But to be fair, these site types could be used in all sorts of different ways, which might make you think that there should be other types of site on this list too, such as, I don't know, a community site or a news site. But what we tend to see is that we simply have these two types of site, which then get customized to turn it into whatever you need it to be for the scenario that you have in mind. But anyway, we'll start off with a communication site. And in a nutshell, these types of sites, these communication sites are designed to, as Microsoft says, inform and engage. And basically, this simply could be your company intranet. It's where you would go to see company news or to get links to where you need to go to submit expenses or to request time off or to find out the company's policy on working from home. You know the kind of thing. But a distinguishing feature about these communication sites is that we expect a lot of visitors, but only a few editors. So we are expecting pretty much every single person in the organization to visit it at some point, aren't we? But we do not expect all of those people to be able to edit the site. So no, we expect only a handful of people to actually have edit rights, perhaps a couple of folks in the HR department and maybe a couple in IT or whoever the individuals are who are responsible for the content on the internet. But anyway, let's look at a quick example of a communication site. And you can see that I'm in the Microsoft 365 portal here. And don't worry, once we do start digging in deep into SharePoint, I will hide the tabs at the top here to give ourselves a bit more room on the screen. But if I just go into SharePoint from here, and I'm just going to dive into the landing. So this is the example intranet from Microsoft's demo environment. And you can see straight away that it does look quite corporate, doesn't it? It looks like it has been designed with a view to engaging employees. We've got various links across the top here, which pop out to lots of sub pages for information and whatnot. And as I scroll through, you can see that there's various feeds for news and events and whatnot. So yes, very much an intranet type of look and feel. And you will also notice that if you were to sort of look around the other options here, I do not have the ability to edit this site because I am a mere user. I'm not an editor or anybody important to do this internet, so I can't make changes to this site, which is what you would expect for an internet. And in fact, if I do go into settings and look at site permissions, what you will see that there are just a handful of site owners who, as you can see, do have full control. And there are, again, a handful of site members who have limited control, but the vast majority of people in this particular example are simply site visitors with no control. They can only view the site content. And that is often what we would expect to see for an intranet for one of these communication sites. And in fact, in the older SharePoint experience, these kinds of sites used to be known as publishing sites. And that kind of makes sense because you can see that the idea here is that the content is published for other people to consume, but not to edit. So yes, with the communication site, we are assuming that there are lots of visitors, but only a few editors. Whereas for a team site, we are assuming that all members of the site are publishing content. That is very much the key characteristic of a team site as opposed to a communication site. This time we're a group of people, we're all members and we're all collaborating, we're all publishing content, we're sharing stuff. This team site is where we go to get our work done. So we're not just consuming content that somebody else has decided to publish to us, like with a communication site. No, this time we're all jumping in and sharing and we're rolling up our sleeves here and getting the work done. And if I just take you back into SharePoint and show you an example of a team site this time, so let me just go back to the SharePoint start page and go into this US sales site. And in fact, you can just guess by the name of the site here that this is much more likely to be a team site rather than a communication site. It's where the members of the US sales team go to get their work done. And in fact, what you're looking at here has hardly been customized at all. As we will see, this is very much how it looks straight out of the box. But you can see that it visually looks different. It's got a different style of navigation navigation rather than the navigation bar across the top like we saw with that intranet example we've got this navigation down the side and this is all about having conversations with the team or sharing documents with the team or having a shared notebook and there are other things we can add as well as we will see but for example if I click on the shared document library here then I've got various folders and various documents that I am sharing with members of the team 
So this is a team working experience this time. Rather than it being open to the whole company like we would expect for the intranet example, well this time we can see at the top right hand corner there are only seven members of this site. And if I click that, what we get to see is that yes, group membership, there are seven people. There are just a couple of owners who are the ones with the superpowers. <laughs> so there's a generic administrator login there and also James is an owner. Everybody else is a member of the site, but I can still jump in and start sharing content. I can edit these files or I could upload my own. And even if I need to edit the way this team site looks as well, you can see here I do have an edit button available, even though I am just a member of the site and not a site owner in any way. Because it's got that different emphasis, we're assuming that we're all working together towards a shared goal here. So yes, although we could change these permissions, the expected behaviour is that everybody will be able to edit the site and publish content to it. So yes, as I said, these are the two primary types of SharePoint site, but I do have one more thing to add to this list because you might hear reference to the idea of a hub site. Now, let me explain. Any existing site, although usually, admittedly, a communication site, can become a hub site. And the idea is that other SharePoint sites can then be associated with a hub site. And this is all about organizing related sites. But when you have got sites associated with the hub site, it's the hub that provides shared navigation across the associated sites and a kind of rolled up experience for content and search. And it's instead of trying to create a fixed hierarchy of SharePoint sites by creating subsites, because that's not very flexible. They're kind of pretty much permanently attached to the parent site in the hierarchy hierarchy. Whereas with these hubs, you can change which hub a particular site is associated with. The point being, it's then much easier to change your SharePoint structure rather than trying to move those older style subsites around. But this is a diagram that I snipped from the Microsoft documentation on SharePoint hubs. You can see the hubs in orange here. So I've got three, HR, Sales and EMEA. And you can see that each hub has got a number of SharePoint sites associated with it, either communication sites shown in the green or team sites shown in blue. And as I said, that hub provides us with the shared navigation and whatnot across the sites associated with it. But if our organization changes, then it's going to be easy to, for example, change this team site here so that it's associated with this hub instead. So as I said, it's much more flexible than trying to manage subsites. But anyway, I have put a link to where I got this in the skill if you want to learn more about hubs, because I'm not really going to say too much more about them in this course, because hub sites can only be created by global administrators or SharePoint administrators. And we'll hear a little bit more about those different administrator roles in the next video. But for now, let me just show this chalkboard here again, which I think will serve quite well as a summary for this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Oh, and also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free, yes, free, a free trial.